Hi, welcome back to God's Golden Acres. I'm Kim and I've been gone a little bit. So we had, a, you know, we had been sick through the winter pretty bad. Well, then I found a lump and I had a lot of pain in that area. And pain is actually good. Typically that means non-cancerous, benign, but something that needs to be taken care of. Um, and I woke, I go into the doctor and the pain's coming and going. We can't catch it in office. It's like, well, just ca call me if it comes back and we'll figure it out. Hopefully because it's faded, it'll stay away. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. What comes back like five days later. And so he orders an ultrasound. Pain switches sides because it had been on the right, not the left. Okay, so I get up to the ultrasound. Radiologist goes, I want a mammogram. I was freaking out, like totally horrible, right? Like that's not what you want to hear, like going for an ultrasound to see what's going on with these swollen spots. You're like, you're thinking really bad deep mastitis and maybe a cyst, right? Because it's really painful. And you know that cancer is unlikely because of the pain. And then they're wanting to go more extreme because of the way it's presenting. Turns out it's swollen lymph nodes, which is really painful swollen lymph nodes and the lymph nodes are swelling around the breast tissue. It's like, what would do that? And it's like, well, we think it's because you're just drying up weird. Overproducer, so you're drying up more than most people deal with and with more cells. Because I, uh, with my last, I pumped for two and we donated and fed one. So I basically fed triplets. Um, yeah. So I've had this kind of crazy medical stuff going on. I also started subbing at the private school because my kids can come with me because they have a daycare there. Um, just to get a little start up, right? Getting started on some of this home setting is slow. So all this time I'm like, dealing with all this medical stuff, I'm also trying to do that. And it's January, February, so I kind of was like, uh, YouTube isn't growing usually at this time, especially for this type of channel. And I just took a break then. So I'm about to start getting ready to start seeds. I'm a hair late. I usually like to try to get started a couple weeks ago, but that wasn't happening. So I'm gonna go get my stuff to wash it and start some seeds in my, um, bathroom because we have a very large bathroom if you're new here and go from there I don't know exactly how we're gonna get everything set up in the bathroom I have way too many Rubbermaid containers in there from like switching sizes of clothes I haven't taken like the winter clothes Rubbermaids back down and we're already at the end of February so I don't think they're going to the basement I think they're just gonna sit there until we need to put up all the snow clothes and then they're going to go to the basement. So I'm going to get some seeds started. I'm going to wash a bunch of stuff. And I don't have a bathtub. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to wash all my stuff I'm in a Rubbermaid container in my shower. Because I don't even, I don't have a hose either. <laughs> so I can't, it's a little bit of a pain to get it all set up. It's just a bit windy. So I have stored all of my bootstrap farmer containers. I don't have the best um, small cell setup yet. We're just gonna make do with the few cells I have. And those are the cheap ones, they're not bootstrap farmer yet. I need to buy new ones, but hey. Cat food in the garden shed. And the dog's like, ah, oh, yes. Hey Jade, you wanna say hi? You getting big. You're stinky, why? You smell like you rolled in something dead. Did you roll in something dead? Now my hands are gonna be really stinky. Thankfully we have Dawn. Dawn gets that smell out. I'm gonna pet you even though you rolled. All right, so that's sitting here in the shed and so it all needs washed and that's what we're gonna go do well i've got everything inside there's a little dirt in here and i will sanitize that you can do that just with some boiling water and 
I personally use the coffee pot for this little um, seed starter tray amount of dirt. You can boil a full pot of water on the stove if you have dirt from last year that you need to use, but that's just how I do it. It's not quite boiling, but it's hot enough to kill off any germs. So it'll work because coffee pots get to bun, which is what we have. I think they are 189 degrees, 188 degrees. I can ask my father-in-law. He worked for them and they had a big study on the perfect coffee brew temperature and that's what they try to set their stuff up for the toys out of the shower to make room for a container to fit here and it's kind of a tight spot between those two sitting spots we don't like this very much we're gonna eventually replace it it's filling up the tub is gonna get really soaking with the or you know like covered in muddy water probably It'll be a good time to figure out, um, get Andrew to get out his drill and he has buffing pads he uses and um, a scrubber wheel for the shower. Uh, and we don't do that every time we clean the shower, but occasionally after washing the dogs, after washing all the garden equipment, we do do that deep scrub or in the summer when the kids are just like totally muddy, but it's not quite warm enough, like late spring, early summer, not quite warm enough to just hose them down outside that's when we get that stuff out. It works really, really well. Waiting for the tub to fill up. I'll go ahead and show you our coffee pot. So like I said, it's bun. You have to have cold water. Flip that up. And it's instant. So this has a water reservoir that just stays. And I have it out because I've been making tea. So we don't have the the funnel in to do coffee or the divider because it makes it you know divide out out over the coffee so this will keep it the hottest for the water and it's fairly instant because like we're already at basically four coffee cups of water while we're waiting for the rubbery container to I kind of feel like while I'm waiting because we're in the house I'm like angling because my house is just a little unorganized I would say from you know being sick and starting the subbing and getting some work and I'm just like like it's I'm fine with how it's being lived in but it looks different on camera things just when they're a little bit cluttered right tea is here you know the kids put their toy glasses up here and then I have another toy of theirs and then there's like some cake decorating stuff that f fell and some tea that I have in like bowls and the this should go in here this the kids play with like eh, it's just messy our vitamins are up there they're normally up there but like also so is vanilla for making cookies the other day and we're done I want to like lie and like be like oh yeah my house is perfectly clean like it's not but also I don't want to show my all, all the, the messy, messy half. So I didn't have very much dirt in there. And that's going to basically sanitize it all. And that's all dependent on temperature. Almost everything, nursing homes for a reason, cook up to 190 degrees. And that's because it kills basically everything. And you don't have to worry about sick people getting sick. Most of the time, you really just need things up to... 165 for 30 seconds. You can be a little bit lower than that for like a minute, right? Or two minutes and it will kill stuff off. But that's why we advise. Um, cooking to that certain temp certain temperatures also gets you to certain flavors and to certain textures. But in this case, of course, right, it's just dirt. So about 190 is a little less. I'm pretty sure the coffee pot's like 189 and it's gonna be fairly warm for a little bit longer than that. It should kill about everything. So I'm not worried about it not being exactly boiling. Because we don't get any, most of our food up to exactly boiling, let alone the dirt that you should be fine in. Here's my very soapy water. I almost wish I had two containers. You know how it, 
in commercial kitchens you have three sets or, or three bay sinks. I almost I li wish I had at least two, but three would be easier because this water is going to get muddy very fast. I wish I had a rinse soap rinse situation here. And if I had a hose for that shower head or even just a bath spigot like in an actual bathtub, that would be very functional. That is my ideal position here. And I don't have another rubber rink this size. At least not free. Because technically there's one right there. With all the stuff that needs to go to the basement. But. That is full of. 18 month clothes that need to go to my sister. And I'm not pulling them all out. So we're just going to scrub. And of course I'm not going to like. Scrub every single thing on this video. I'm not even going to time lapse it. But the idea is just to get everything. Fairly well soaked with soap so it'll kill the germs. I use Dawn. Um, I'm sure there's better soaps for this um, as far as what she is. Um, avoiding certain chemicals. I did not buy the soap in my house right now. It's one of my husband's grandmother's love languages that she buys some of that stuff for us and we just happily accept. Um, and that's gentle enough to be used on oil spills. So I'm thinking sanitizing my stuff and cleaning my dishes. We will be fine. And I'm just going to give everything a nice scrub. And actually, I probably won't even do everything today. I only need a few trays. Um, and as I up plant is when I start using more trays anyway. So I don't need every single tray right now. And honestly, not even every single tray got used last year. Most did. But a few didn't. Actually, and those are, I think, are up there. And I'll probably just leave those be. Because they've sat in my bathroom, stagnant, with nothing in it. And I'm not worried about them. And, like, this one right now is the worst one. Which is also why I'm like, not dumping in the soapy water yet. Because it's gross. Um, this one accidentally got left outside longer, too. So it's got a little bit of the kind of mossy buildup from being a little damp and outside because it kept getting rained on. And I was like, oops, who got left behind on the picnic table? Because our seed starting um, greenhouse is on the other side of the shop and outside of when I'm using the greenhouse, we're not back there. So this one was an oops. It'll just be a little bit hard to scrub. I'm using a rag. I wish I had a scrub brush to get deep into it. And I don't even know if a traditional scrub brush would work super great. Um, but even though I have small fingers, it's, it's pretty delicate to get into the ridges here, which are there for watering. And I might have to go get an old toothbrush that I keep in the kitchen to do it. It is coming off fairly well though. And yeah, use tools you can use for these things obviously if you have average size fingers or large you're going to struggle even more than I am with this, a regular rag. back when I'm basically done or done with the what I need for this week and the next couple weeks well I've got several washed so now I'm just going to be waiting for the dry I don't like fuzzies from the rags it's something my grandpa said I don't think you get them that often but my grandpa's always like let things air dry because you get fuzzies and now I think that every time I go to dry dishes I like to let them air dry so I'm gonna let them air dry while I get this over here set up it is an absolute mess. Like, you know, we've got winter clothes, boots, um, containers that never got put away. And I've got laundry kind of spread out this way. And I'm trying to decide if I just put all my seats starting here and use the lights. Don't have the best lights. So I've been having them underneath the window right next to the washer. Because then you get a little bit of sunlight, even though that's the west side and it's gets really dark before they get a lot of good light from the sun. I think it helps a little bit while they're getting started. And we have a few cool days left. I know like Thursday it's supposed to be 
around 13 for the low it could change so I'm not quite ready to put stuff out in the greenhouse but I think after this week maybe next week I will be sending stuff that way so I just need enough time for stuff to sprout and just sit for just a second before it gets out there and then I think I'll be good getting stuff out there because I usually just germinate it on the heating pads and then as soon as it's germinated take it out to the greenhouse um that way I have a kind of constant rotation from this spot because it's not the greatest spot I need a better spot and more shelving and better lights I would like to end up with it in the basement on a timer uh, we need more outlets for that I need new shelving for that I need new lights for that it's kind of a a cost thing to get started hence subbing and getting like some more hours in also, that's kind of for Christmas because I love Christmas and a big Christmas for my kids. Not that I will do more presents, just bigger presents, right? So instead of a toy, you know, I might buy, like, as, as they're getting older, like a Lego set, you know, because I have that in a different category than toy because Legos are just better than, like, a tractor. Um, we're also switching our tractor set to a particular brand, a little more expensive, a little bit more hardy. That way you can get rid of some of the, the mismatched ones and they'll all be interchangeable. So all the wagons and the tractors and the trucks and the things will all fit together. So that is part of it, I have to admit. But part, a lot of it is this upset um, startup stuff. Just need a little bit extra to get started and then hopefully we can come back and not need that outside work. Or maybe I'll enjoy it because I'm a social person. And maybe I'll just do that subbing for social and it'll just be a little bit on top. Have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Never works that way, but it's a nice thought. All right, it's been a couple days. And I did end up setting up back over here under the window for the seed starting setup. If anything, my house actually looks worse, even though I really think things are cleaner. But it's like, I think today is the last real cold day, so I'm pulling out gloves and it's like oh yeah like this one's the one that's, that the kids have worn and then put like straight back in the bin so they definitely need washed here's the bin that's basically not been touched because we have lots of gloves because little kids lose gloves and it just it looks mm, don't don't want to talk about it but since it's been a couple days we're actually getting some sprouting so this is broccoli and cauliflower and then Abe Lincoln tomatoes and I'm on the memorizing list for this and then lavender, which can take up to three months to germinate. So it's gonna just be hanging out. And then down here, we have Roma tomatoes. These are not the best lights. I need to save up to get better lights. And after today, I will actually be sneaking what's sprouted out to the greenhouse, because we shouldn't have any more 13 degree weather, hopefully. I don't like to run the heater that low out there. And this is celery, and it has not sprouted yet. And celery can take a little while, so it'll sit with the lavender up on the top shelf uh, with the warmer on, because we have warmers underneath. So, yep, this is our seed starting setup. It's looking pretty good as I slip on the vinyl floor here. It's looking pretty good. It's just getting started. It's the tomatoes. I will sell some of them. I will start most of my tato, uh, tomatoes that I will sell later because they just get too big by the time market opens. So here our farmer's market opens the second week of May usually. Well, you can start planting at those last couple days of April because that's your average last frost date. So there's a whole two weeks of extra growth until we really get up to the farmer's market. And that's where I sell most of my tomato starts. Uh, broccoli and cauliflower starts actually sell really good on Facebook in this area. I have no idea why. Well, thanks for being with us today. I'll be praying for you guys. Hope you got a good start to your guys' garden season. I hope to be able to be on here more as seed stuff goes on and starting our garden but now my daughter's getting referred to an ENT 
So, we're just going to deal with the medical stuff, winter and spring. And hopefully just be done with that. Thanks for being with us. God bless.